Time now for sports on 104.7 The Cave. Here's Ned Reynolds. Mike, the intern, Ned Reynolds in the studio. We finally got him thawed off. Let's talk Chiefs football. We did have some guys missing from practice yesterday. Some of them probably just maintenance. The others... Cause for concern, Ned? Well, maybe and maybe not. Not in the case of Juju Smith-Schuster because he's been cleared to play again because of the concussion protocol, but he was ill. And one has to assume this was just the bug that's going around, so he should be all right for Sunday. Jarek McKinnon, a bit of a hamstring injury, and this is probably one that does require a little bit of time off, but not, not a tremendous amount. The other one, Canarius Tony, you have to wonder about because this guy's had nothing but hamstring problems his entire time in the NFL, which includes last year with the New York Giants and now here with the Kansas City Chiefs. He is on the sidelines, likely not to play again this week. He's a pretty good weapon when he's healthy, but evidently he's not. So we'll see. Those three were missing from practice. The Chiefs and the Bengals are going to be a pretty good game on Sunday. This is what you have to class up. It's, it's not a trap game because everybody knows it's going to be a tough game. Mm-hmm. The trap games are the ones that you don't expect. But over and above all that, Chiefs need to be at full force in this one. And there's a couple guys on the Cincinnati side that might not be in there, too. Yeah, but most of their guys were out at practice yesterday, yeah. so we should be all right. Yeah, we should be. We'll see. Um, kind of a sad note this morning, speaking of the NFL, one of the best has passed on. Yeah, especially nostalgic for me because this guy, when I was in college and then in the Navy and then out here, was a very big star in uh, the world of football. John Hadle has left us at the age of 82 16, almost 16 years with the uh, San Diego Chargers, and he was, he was the quarterback back in the 60s and into the early 70s after the merger had taken place. Most of his career, as I mentioned, with the Chargers did end up with the Rams and the Packers toward the end of his career. And Hadel also an assistant coach at his alma mater, which is KU. Even more than his alma mater, he grew up in Lawrence, and he's one of the state of Kansas' great high school prep stars, was a big-time recruit, He took Kansas, took the Jayhawks to their very first ever bowl game victory. I think that's that's pretty significant. Hadel and that whole KU team back in the 1960s was pretty doggone good, nationally ranked. John Hadel leaving us at the age of 82. And I know the folks in Kansas who remember him very well, and and the sports world for that matter, mourn his passing. Yeah, great. It was when men were men and the NFL was a completely different (laughs) game. Uh, Speaking of which... We actually have ourselves one hell of a game tonight in Thursday Night Football, Looks I think. Looks like it might be a pretty good one. They're going to Gillette Stadium up in Foxborough, and it's the Buffalo Bills and the New England Patriots. The Patriots are kind of flying under the radar, folks. They're 6-5 and five on the year. Now, for a Bill Belichick team, that's uh, that's not acceptable. But this is not, this is not the Patriots of the past. Still, they are pretty good. Don't write them off. Taking on the Buffalo Bills team that's 7-3. and This will be a nice little football game coming up tonight. I'm anxious to see what does happen. The Bills will be a very light. Bills and the Pats, and it should be a pretty good game. Minus 4.5 Bills. Ah, it's a little close, but the over-under, 43.5, which I'm kind of like, I don't know about Well, that. it'll be a defensive game, yeah. but that half is a hybrid. Yeah, game. that half's a hybrid, but uh, that 43.5, I'd say take the under on that. So the basketball Bears have opened the Missouri Valley Conference season. Took them a while to get to that point, actually, but uh, did they go in victorious? They did. Opened up on the road in Chicago, coming to Chicago from Nassau in the Bahamas, which is kind of a circuitous... No, it's not really circuitous. You're not in a circle, but it's a long and culture-changing trip. Depends, anyway, depends the, on how the, the pilot takes them on their trip. Well, Could be a circle. And, and it's <laughs> dependent on your pilot any time. <laughs> yeah, true. Uh, the Bears took the court in Chicago. They alleged the crowd to be over 1,000. looked like it was over one. There weren't very many people there. Illinois, Chicago it is not the ball club that the Bears are. And the Bears beat them 66-51. to 51. Missouri State didn't really have a great shooting night, and that's a surprise because this is a pretty good shooting team, a streak shooting team, but nonetheless a pretty good one. And they didn't have a great night last night, shot only 37% from the field, but Illinois Chicago shot only 30% and turned it over 15 times. Why? Because that Bears harassing defense, and I've got to give Dana Ford a lot of credit, he's implemented with these guys a defensive strategy that is really tough. The Bears have a lot of quickness on their ball club, and they're utilizing it to the fullest extent. They crash the boards, they play underneath in the paint. Here's a little interesting stat uh, that I found. Basketball 
puts a lot of credibility on points in the paint. Well, the Bears had 40 points in the paint last night. Illinois Chicago had, I think it was 18 or something like that. But whatever it is, it's a massive disparity there. And that's what cost the Flames. They could not shoot. They shot only 30%. Why? Being harassed on defense. It's a it's a trapping man-to-man that the Bears use, and they do it very, very well. Bears had 40 rebounds for the game, and I think Illinois Chicago had 20. Hey, there's the case in point. Now, there were some other surprises in the Missouri Valley last night, but this is a big one for the Bears. They are home to play a very good Bradley team on Saturday night. And hopefully they can build on that win in Chicago. Good to see them uh, stepping up big time in the Missouri Valley so far. Have the... Yankees said how much they're going to uh, pay uh, the judge. <laughs> they have. They've said they would go as much as $300 million over an eight-year period. That's just shy of $40 million a year. Now, judge hasn't made a decision yet. I really think he's going to return to the Yankees. But there are three teams in the hunt. One, of course, is the Yankees. That's where he's been playing. The other is the San Francisco Giants. How do they figure into the mix? Well, that's where Judge is from, Fresno, California. He would be back in his home area. The third is the Los Angeles Dodgers, and they are always in the hunt for uh, some of the players, some of the big-name players, because they do have the treasure chest to fill out that is uh, sometimes dicey situation with these guys. But the Yankees have said, we'll go to $300 million, see what everybody else offers, and we may go up from there. They want Judge back, and probably that's where Judge will sign. And probably one of the only teams in Major League Baseball that can afford to pay <laughs> that kind of money to one player. All right, so, of course, the Chiefs and Bengals in Cincinnati, this Sunday mid-afternoon game. Uh, everything will start off at, with Ned Talk at 1, but um, going in, we've got the uh, uh, odds on this one, it's pretty much a pick I mean, Chiefs are favored two and a half right now. Yeah, the fact is that a pick is one or less. One or a, a zero. But uh, two and a half is virtually, you can't say literally, but it's virtually a pick And uh, that, I think, is indicative of what kind of game we're going to see. The Bengals, a pretty doggone good football team. They can, they can play, and they have something of a hex over the Chiefs. They beat them last year, and Kansas City owes them a little bit of a payback. So here you have a rather unusual situation, too. You have the reigning Super Bowl champions who have just gone completely flat. They deflated. They have nothing left. They're the Los Angeles Rams. You have the runner-up to Super Bowl champion playing pretty well. Burrow and his crew can play, and the Cincinnati Bengals, the runners-up to Super Bowl champs, are certainly a formidable challenge, and they want the Chiefs back home, which they will get in Cincinnati, and they want to... They want to beat them. This is this is an emotional game for Cincinnati. It's an emotional game for the Chiefs, too. We want revenge after last year. I can tell you that yeah, right that now. That revenge factor, Mike, I'm going to disagree with you. I don't think it really figures into pro football as much as it does with the colleges and high schools True. and things like that. But the Chiefs know fully, and the Chiefs have a lot of pride, and uh, they know going in that Cincinnati is going to give them a pretty good battle. And I've said it before, and I've said it pretty much all season, that Andy Reid has been kind of playing, I don't want to say playing down to his opponents, but... He's not blowing anybody out. He needs to do that against Cincinnati. (laughs) Put his foot on their throat and not let up. Ned, you have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow.